Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve an example related to the setting out of simple circular curve by deflection angle method. So let's say that this is the example that we want to solve by using deflection angle method. So here we have been given that there are two tangents which uh, intersect at a change of 1520 meters. So let's say that uh, this is the back tangent and this is the forward tangent and they are intersecting at point B and at this point the change is given that is 1520 meters. Let's say that the start point is A and the end point of the curve is C. What else we have been given? We have been given with the angle of intersection which is this angle. This angle is given which is 150 degree. The radius of the curve is also given which is 240 meter. So let's show the radius on the sketch. So radius is given which is 240 meters. And then it is being asked to us that uh, calculate all the necessary data for setting out of the simple circular curve by deflection angle method. One thing more is given to us that the peg interval should be taken as that of 15 meter. And we also have to prepare the setting out calculation table. So let's move on. So the deflection angle, this angle I'm talking about, which is not given, but we can calculate with the help of this angle of intersection. So we know that this total angle is 180, so this deflection angle would be 30 degree. Now there is some basic data that we need to calculate for setting out this curve by the deflection angle method. Like we need to know the change at this point, change at A point, we need to know the change at this point, the end point of the curve. So change at A point can be calculated if you know the tangent length, this distance I'm talking about. So the tangent length of a simple circular curve can be calculated by the formula that is r sine phi by 2. So we have radius which is 240 meter, deflection angle is also known which is 30 degree. So then we can have the tangent length and if we go through the calculations it will be around 64.3 meters. So once we know the tangent length then we can calculate the change at A point as change at A point can be easily calculated if we subtract tangent length from the change of the point of intersection. So change at B point subtracting tangent length we can have then the change at A point. So 1520 minus 64.3 meters will give us the change at A point and after going through the calculations it will be 1455 point seven meters. Now the next thing that we need to calculate is the change at point C which is end point of the curve and uh, the change at this point can be calculated if we know the length of the curve. So we know the formula for the length of the curve which is pi r phi over 180 degree. Everything is known pi r deflection angle. So then we can calculate the length of the curve. So I'm doing this simple calculation it will be 125.6 meter. So now we know the length of the curve and also we are known with the changes at point A then we can calculate the changes at point C by simply adding them together because we are moving forward. So 1455.7 plus 135.6 adding them together we will be having the changes at point C. So it will come out to be 1581.3 meters. Now as we have to set out the simple circular curve by the deflection angle method and from the basics of the deflection angle method we know that the total curve is being divided into small segments depending upon the peg interval that is being given to us. So how many small chords would be there so that can be calculated by using the formula by dividing the length with the peg interval we can have the number of small chords. So number of small chords can be calculated as the length of the curve dividing with the peg interval. So length is 125.6, peg interval is 15 and after doing the calculations it would be 8.37. Now from uh, this value we come to know that there will be 8 complete small chords and one small chord of 0.37 times the length of the peg interval. This may not be clear to you but once we do the calculations in setting out table then you will come to know the purpose of calculating this number of small chords. 
so i'm talking about this setting out table where we will be having multiple points depending upon the number of small chords that we have got so we have six columns in first column we need to write the station like the start point or the end point or the points in between the start and end points the peg interval that we have chosen the change at that point small deflection angle that we are going to calculate using the formula ultimately we will be having the total deflection angle that is being calculated by adding the small def deflection angle with the previous small deflection angle and the last one is the remarks where we can write whether that is the start point or the end point of the curve so we are going to start with the first point which is the station a and at that point there is no peg interval so there will be nothing written in this box the chain is at point a we have uh, calculated and if you recall it's 1455.7 now once we are at point a there won't be any deflection angle so nothing to be written here and since there is no small deflection angle so we will not be having any total deflection angle and in remarks you can write that this is the start point of the curve so later on we will be having uh, the points on the curve so that can be calculated using the peg interval that is given to us which is 15 and uh, the station point would be the first station point let's name that as p1 as point 1 and at and change at that point will be calculated by adding change of a point with the peg interval so on adding it we will be having 470.7 keep in mind that change is in meter also the peg interval is meter so now we will be having some small deflection angle because deflection angle is actually the angle between point a and the first point on the curve so that is calculated with the help of this formula anti l over pi r where l is the small peg interval 50 pi we know that is 3.14 and r is 240 for this curve so when we do the calculations the small deflection angle our first point would be 1 degree 47 minutes and 39 seconds and the total deflection angle or uh, you can say cumulative deflection angle will be same as that of this one 1 degree 47 minutes 39 seconds on field we may not have a instrument that can exactly measure this angle so we can round it off to the nearest angle depending upon the least count of the instrument like let's say that the instrument can only measure the 10 seconds then we can round it off to 30 that depends upon the type of instrument that you are using let's say that we are using an instrument that has an at least count of one second that may not be practical but this is just for the calculations in order to have knowledge to you that how we can calculate the small deflection angles in this type of method now the second point peg interval will remain same it is 15 chain age will now become 1485.7 because of the addition of 15 with this previous chain age of 0.1 now since the peg interval is same so we are going to have the same small deflection angle now the total deflection angle will not be the same because we are now going to add this deflection angle with the previous one it means 1 degree 47 minutes 29 seconds will be added with the 1 degree 47 minutes 29 seconds which is the same for the previous point the calculation is done adding 1 degree 47 minutes 29 seconds with this one because this is the same so the that will be actually two times of this angle so on calculating it will be 3 degree 34 minutes 58 seconds next point point 3 peg interval will remain same as we have calculated that the small chords are 8 total complete uh, small chords are 8 so we can uh, have the 8 points then p4 p5 p6 p7 and p8 the peg interval up to this point will remain same because we have eight complete peg intervals and in a similar way we can have the changes adding with the previous one so this will be 1500.7 now how about the last point which is the end point of the curve which we have represented with the 
the C station. At that point, we have uh, we are already known with the chain age. We can directly write it down over here. But again, we can calculate with the help of uh, the peg intervals as well. So the last interval is of 0.37 multiplied by 15. Why this? Because uh, when we were calculating the number of peg intervals, the value came out to be 8.37. So eight complete peg intervals and last one is of 0.37 times the peg interval. So on doing the calculation, it will be 5.37. 55 meter so last peg interval is a 5.55 meter so when we add this with the chain age so we are going to get the same chain age that we have got previously 1581.3 so small deflection angles will remain same because the peg interval is same up to this point but for the last point the peg interval is no longer same peg, peg interval here is 5.55 so the small deflection angle for the last point will be different because that is being calculated by this formula so when we do the calculations it will be 0 degree 39 minutes and 46 seconds so the next total deflection angle is being calculated by adding this 3 degree 34 minutes and 58 seconds with this 1 degree 47 minutes 29 seconds the process goes in this way so on doing the calculations it will be 5 degree 22 minutes and 27 seconds the next one will also be done in the same way 7 degree 9 minutes 56 seconds next 8 degree 57 minutes and 25 seconds for point six ten degree forty four minutes and fifty four seconds for point seven twelve degree thirty two minutes and twenty three seconds point number eight fourteen degree nineteen minutes and fifty two seconds by adding the last angle of zero degree thirty nine minutes forty six seconds with this fourteen degree nineteen minutes and fifty two seconds we are going to get an angle which is approximately 15 degrees and that will be the end point so one thing we have noticed here that is this 15 degree is actually half of the total deflection angle. the total deflection angle was 30 so you can see that the last angle that we have got is 15 degree this is the scene that we have got when we were discussing the concept of the total deflection angle so this is kind of a check when we are doing the calculations for the setting out of a simple circular curve by the deflection angle method that at the end point of the curve you are going to get the total deflection angle as half of the deflection angle of the curve now as far as the calculations are concerned uh, whatever we have got the values like uh, so these uh, the, are the different eight points are in between them so the angles are measured by placing the instrument at point a and then pointing these points let's say that this is one point two three four five six seven and eight points so these angles whatever angles that we have got we can point it towards those points like let's say that for point one we will be having the deflection angle and that deflection angle is in between this tangent line and the line pointed towards point one and for this point this will be this will be small deflection angle one this will be small deflection angle two so all those are the one that we have calculated this one i'm talking about so when you are at point one so this will be the angle and when you are at point two this will be the angle and so on so this is how the setting out of a simple circular curve is done with the help of deflection angle method so this type of method is commonly used method as compared to the other methods of setting out of the simple circular curve you already got the concept of the total deflection angle method so this was the example related to this so this is all from this video i believe now you have got concept how the problem related to the total deflection angle related to the deflection angle method is to be solved thank you for watching this video